however you feel. Um, okay, so it looks like we're streaming. And then Paul and Desiree, I've made you both co-hosts. I mean, I know I normally do, but I, I'm just gonna give you a warning. It, it seems like my internet for the past few days has been really terrible. So um, I'm hoping nothing happens as far as me having to drop off or being kicked off, but I just wanna give you the warning. Okay, <clears throat> sounds good. Hopefully nothing will happen. <laughs> I, th I think it should be okay, but yeah, my I usually have excellent internet. So this is not, let me know what's happening. Yeah, I lo we lost internet here, or I lost internet here at the office this afternoon. So I'm assuming it won't again. But since you made the, <laughs> since you mentioned, I just let you know. Spectrum's been having some problems these last two days. That exp I have Spectrum. All right, that's good to know. Thank you, Martin. Because yeah, it's really this is very. I mean, I don't love it, but it's not. It's pretty decent and it, it's been incredibly slow. Yeah, they sent me an email yesterday telling them to forgive them. <laughs> they could, you could forgive them if they give you a reduction in your bill. You would. <laughs> that, that always helps. Hi, Tara. Hello, Nancy. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. And yourself? All right. Hanging in there. Um, we all are. We all are. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Frank should be joining. I just spoke to him. Yeah, he's on. Um, I think we're just still, it looks like folks, yeah, we're definitely still getting some more folks. So you see my, I see the number rising. So we'll wait, we should, we'll wait a couple more minutes and then we'll go ahead and start. We know that there's a lot on the agenda. Okie dokie.
Okay, oh, we're about to start, um, but I'm just gonna ask um, if you are, if, if you could all keep yourself on mute. Um, I, Desiree should be the one unmuted um, since she'll probably be starting off the presentation. Um, yeah, I'm gonna hand it over to Paula. Yeah, thanks Tara. Um, just, a, just a very quick welcome to everyone. It's been a while since we were together for more than a few minutes. So I'm glad to see you or your names on the screen. Um, but yeah, let's kick off the December meeting. Um, I'm gonna hand it over to you, Desiree. Great, thanks. Can you hear me, Paula? Good, okay, perfect. Um, hi, everyone. Um, welcome to our 16th Community Advisory Group meeting. Um, once again, my name is Desiree Gazzo. I'm from h and Lero, the Program Management Construction Management um, company on the Esker, or consultant rather, on the Esker project. Um, I'm joined here with me tonight with our colleagues from DDC, DOT, and Parks um, to talk to you about um, the Esker project, provide updates. Um, again, many as you, many of you know that the um, a temporary restraining order, the TRO was lifted, so we can present again. Um, Again, as Paula said, we haven't been here in a little while. So um, again, we are happy to come back um, and of course uh, provide you with construction updates again. So uh, let's see, oh, I didn't share my screen yet. Sorry, hold on one second. Okay, screen. Okay, all right, screen is good. Great, thank you, all right. So highlights, um, and many of you received the agenda, um, so it was pretty similar to this, I think. Um, we'll go over the overview of contracts. Um, we'll do PA2 first and update on the September and October air quality, um, since again, we weren't able to present the September last month, so we have both this month. Um, and then we will go into project area one um, construction updates. There was a request for um, a little more information on amenities, so we or open amenities, so we provided that um, for you tonight. Uh, access, we have a couple of what we've heard items, and then just we popped in the interim recreation um, slides that we've been showing with the resources for that as well. Um, so for overview of contracts, um, again, our project area overview, everybody is very familiar with with the um, with the construction areas um, for the overview of contracts again the notice to proceed for project area one was august 16th um, there was again a temporary restraining order put um, on the project area one um, however the contractor was able to move forward with the passive lawn installation um, so that has been completed and we are coordinating with the parks department now on the opening of that area. So the sod that was installed there um, needs to take a little bit of time to knit kind of into the soil before it can actually be used. Um, so again, we're coordinating with parks and they um, will let us know when that space can be opened for public use. So we'll um, definitely be sure to um, provide you know, any updates of, of when that area is open. Um, the partial park closure, which is kind of south of Stanton Street, which um, again has been what we've been communicating as that construction approach um, and the greenway closure will commence on um, December 6th. And we have more information on that in the second half. Um, so again, this first half will take questions primarily on project area two, and then if we could save the project area one questions until I go over that in the second half, that would be helpful um, because there's more to go through on project area one. Um, for project area two, we are in construction on what kind of we're calling the phase two um, portion of it. Uh, Astor Levy Playground, Stuyvesant Cove Park um, at East 20th Street, north to the Solar One area, um, again, and we have a, an updated picture, over 650 feet of the flood wall have been um, installed to date. Um, and then parallel conveyance, the bid was advertised on um, November 12th, 
and the bid opening is now scheduled for January 4th. I think we received some questions on that um, in Pima, so it is now uh, January 4th. So for project area two, um, we have an updated map showing over here the area kind of at East 20th Street um, that the contractor just recently moved into to start the gate work over there. Um, we have been in close coordination with um, Solar One and EDC over the past several weeks. Um, we were able to coordinate with Solar One on um, some removal of the um, logs and, and uh, trees there, and they're using them to share with community gardens for um, shiitake mushroom logs, um, and then I think some of the mulched um, mulched uh, wood chips and etc. They're using within the open area of Solar One. So we're really excited that that coordination was able to happen. Um, so that's the new area that the contractor is moving into. Again, still part of um, that Stuyvesant Cove area. Um, Asser Levy um, Playground, they're continuing with the pile installation, flood wall construction, and they're also starting to work on kind of the curbs and the sidewalks and um, kind of what we call the hardscapes for the, for the playground area. So that's exciting uh, to see that moving forward. And then in the East 23rd Street intersection, um, there's some Con Edison utility work. Again, the pile installation there and along the West Service Road to really complete um, that outline of the flood wall that kind of zigzags, again, from Asser Levy um, down across the, the surface roads here and then into Solar One, which is um, significantly completed that, that uh, the wall there um, and then into Stuyvesant Cove Park. Um, in area five here, and again, this, this whole area is not closed down. There is localized um, Con Edison utility work um, in this area five, and then in area six here at the bottom, um, there is uh, some uh, sewer work that's happening there um, that should be finishing up um, relatively soon, um, but we'll provide you an update on that. It, there is still um, some work being done there currently. Um, and then this is an updated uh, access um, slide. So this has, um, again, that new kind of closure area here. Um, however, we were able to provide a path um, here so that there's not kind of a complete dead end and that pedestrians can kind of access the esplanade and then jump or you know walk over to the greenway to then access the sidewalk here and continue back. Um, so we kind of avoid that um, complete dead end turnaround that we had when we were in the northern part of Side Cove. Um, and then the greenway did not change. Uh, there is still greenway access here um, adjacent to the construction. Um, and again, this will continue into next year um, until the contractor moves into the southern uh, portion of Stico Park. Um, and again, just a reminder, there is only local greenway access um, set, uh, north of 23rd Street. So here's an updated construction photo, and I think by now they're even uh, further south. Um, but again, this is the formwork for the wall, um, and then they pour the concrete in the top, and then these are the completed sections of the wall here. So they are making really good progress. Um, CB6 was um, on site. Some of the um, committee members um, earlier this week to, to see the wall and, and it was um, really great. So um, to move into air quality monitoring. So for the September update for September and October, there were um, the PM daily value did not surpass the uh, permissible exposure level um, again for the month of September or October. Um, there were several short um, moments when the uh, PEL or the action levels were surpassed. And again, um, there were just a couple here. And the durations varied between 15 minutes and then the longest was um, 
51 minutes. And again, that was that was kind of a prolonged, um, I guess, a little bit of a more prolonged duration because of the work that they were doing with the excavator. Again, and it was very close to where the air monitor um, was, and that was in the uh, Asser Levy area. Um, for Solar One, there were several um, spikes, and they varied kind of between two minutes and 40 minutes. Um, and again, when the downwind monitor was determined, um, it was below the action MPEL limit, which shows that the particulates, again, did not migrate kind of past the immediate construction area. Um, so that was for September. Um, and again, the contractor is implementing those dust mitigation techniques continuously, um, again, to make sure that, that those PEL levels um, are not in exceedances. Uh, for October, there were um, kind of three, again, short um, spikes, and one was an Astro Levy playground, and that was for a duration of 15 minutes. And then the Solar One monitors, again, it's the Solar One monitors covers the whole area of Astro Levy. That's just what they're named. Um, I mean, the whole area of Stuyvesant Cove Park, apologies, that's just what they're named from when they were initially installed. Solar One and Astro Levy Playground. Um, but again, it covers it's the extents of the Astro Levy um, construction area. Um, and again, there were uh, one in the Astro Levy Playground area for 15 minutes, and then one in the Psycho Park area. And again, it was a, a short spike. Uh, the first one was 27 minutes, and the second one was 12 minutes. So again, the um, the monitors kind of measure in averages of 15 minutes. Um, so again, you know, once a um, action or a, a PEL is surpassed, um, the the contractor does you know take a look at, at what is happening. Um, and again, most of these have been due to kind of idling construction vehicles that were near the the monitors. Um, and then they are moved or turned off, or again, if it was for anything else, then the dust mitigation, et cetera, would be implemented. Um, so those are the updates for project area two. So I can take questions on anything that I just reviewed. And please remember, I will be going into project area one next. So Paula, I don't know if, there were any hands. I, I can't see everything from my screen. And you're on um, mute. Yeah, I don't, I don't see, sorry, I don't see any questions. Am I missing something? Hey, Paula, it's Diane. I can't raise my hand again, um, but I do have one question. Okay, go ahead. Um, I, I just I wanted to understand why that little extra section at 20th Street uh, was closed. Um, I think you guys described that at uh, Community Board 3, but uh, I don't remember hearing why that happened. Yeah, so that's a great question. So there is a gate here at East 20th Street, and I could certainly bring back, um, the next time we come, I can bring back the plan um, for PA2 of where the gates are and where the flood walls are. So there's a gate um, here at the East 20th Street entrance, and it is for partially due to the, the ferry access that's here. It will be easier for them to do the detour to the ferry when they're in this area here. If we could do, if they do the gate work um, here during this, the kind of first phase of Sty Cove. Um, mm -hmm. So that's one of the reasons, and I would imagine there's other kind of con more construction reasons, but. I know that that is one of the reasons why they are doing the gate work right now. Um, so that way, when they then close down this portion here, um, I think it's easier for them to have the ferry access coming from this direction instead of the other due to the construction work that's there. Um, so that is the understanding. I could certainly find out if there's any more details to share, um, but it's the gate, the gate work that's happening right there. Yeah, okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Other questions? Frank. Thanks. Hey, Desiree, just um, 
I don't know. I don't imagine that this falls into DDC purview, but perhaps it does. Uh, just with this slide in front of you, and I'll say as an avid bike rider, um, it really, I mean, again, this is just kind of like pointing out something that I don't know how it can be changed, but the idea of diverting people when they come down uh, from north and then to have to go around a block or otherwise people are going to be biking within the car lane there. Uh, if there's any exception that can be um, outlined for bike riders along to kind of connect back in, uh, again, it's just kind of a, 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 an advocacy point because it's um, like you're showing here, it, you know, you have one block where it's, just, it's disconnected and it just, um, I don't know that people are gonna make their work around and I don't wanna see people riding bikes on sidewalks, et cetera, so anyway. Yeah, no, thanks, Frank. And I think there were lots of conversations of how we can do a, like a localized connection here earlier on, and that was not possible. And technically, um, the Greenway detour, which I don't have a slide of it, but it is on the map, um, excuse me, on the website, technically the detour for the Greenway for Project Area 2 is at 37th Street. Um, and that is where people are supposed to exit um, the, the greenway um, to the north, unless they have, um, you know, kind of localized business that they have to attend to, like at Waterside, because um, there aren't any other um, kind of outlets once you get into this area, um, you know, once you get into the area over here. Um, so technically it is only um, for local access that, that there is here. And um, with the construction in this intersection, it is you know, very dangerous for people to kind of be walking and crossing here. Um, however, as you pointed out, there are people um, that are doing that. We are um, constantly working with DOT on signage for the area um, and elected officials as well. So um, there, you know, we, we are you know, working towards that, but Yes, point taken, and thank you very much. Um, you know, for being. Yeah, I will say that I've I've come. There uh, have been very helpful people crossing the street at that twenty third. Um, I'm sure people up north know better, but every time I've gone down, uh, they're they're very active there at least because it is a little bit dangerous for people to cross. But I'm just acknowledging that there are people there and they've been helpful. Great. No, that's great. We've heard. Um, we have uh, check-ins with Waterside every now and again, and. They also say that you know people who use the intersection like daily to cross back and forth, like the the folks that are aiding in the the crossings, um, the traffic folks, um, are you know they ask how they're doing and you know it's just very you know they're used to seeing them every day. So that's great to hear. Thank you. Any other questions? I think Robin, had, I just saw Robin's hand go up. Oh, yeah, hi, sorry. Since you're on that subject, I didn't want to bring it up, but somebody's brought up about the biking. I mean, it would be really helpful if that stretch there, that's red, uh, if the cars could be diverted off of there and then make that into a bike lane, that would be most helpful. <laughs> you know, you're asking the cars, you know, you're asking bikes to detour, but you're not asking the cars to make a detour. So it's really tight and it's not, it's it's just, you know, I'm, I, I, didn't go up 20th street because as a biker i i, I it's, it's out of the way but maybe a car could instead so i would wonder if you could work with the dot to think about that sure robin we could certainly take that back um again i know our drt colleagues are on so i don't know if neg or team if you have anything that you want to say to that um or again we can you know have further conversations i know again we've had exploited in the past but it would also extend that area and give it sort of that open street quality since we'll, since since that's going to be missing for a while that would also be helpful and i don't see why can't cars can't go around you know anyway just a thought thank you uh, hey desiree i could jump in this is neg from dot i know we've had extensive conversations about this with cb6 um we had looked at this extensively um but there was some Con Edison work happening in this area also that we had not uh, accounted for. And um, 
I think that this area also under the FDR is for staging for for construction. So the idea of having the bike lane go through this area from 20th to 23rd as as much as we wanted to explore that option, it, it just turned out to be infeasible. Um, thanks, Meg. And um, we will, you know, this kind of will be updated um, in next year when we move to the south, you know, to work south of 20th Street. Um, and then, uh, you know, this, there might be a change, you know, with this uh, detour. Can, um, so can, I, can I follow up with one question, Desiree? How are you coordinating the construction with the Con Ed work going? How does that work for you guys? Um, our construction uh, team at DDC and our construction team at HNTB Lero um, are in, you know, constant coordination with Con Ed on the work that they need to do in the area while the escrow work is is happening. So they are they are they're coordinating, you know, all together on that. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions before Desiree continues? Okay, I'll transfer it back over to you, Desiree. Perfect, thank you. Okay, so, okay, so project area one. Um, so the upcoming construction activities. So um, since the TRO was lifted, um, the contractor will be remobilizing now um, and installing the Greenway detour signs, which we'll go over in the next slide um, this week. Um, and then next week, uh, the contractor will be installing the construction fencing which will effectively close off that the first area of construction in the park. Um, so that's south of it's if you run up, it ends up being south of Stanton Street um, here. Um, and then that will um, again provide the contractor with the access to the greenway for the construction activities. Um, and again, that closure is just south of this is ball field number three right here. Um, so this is what we presented um, back before the TRO was issued, um, and then the timeline has changed, um, you know, just a little bit due to that. Um, however, we are moving, you know, kind of picking up, and then we will be starting um, the work in that area the week of December 6th, um, and then through December. And then that's when the kind of clearing and grubbing activities will commence in that closed area of the park um, through the month of December. Um, there will be utility work beginning um, similar as in project area two, how that kind of first stage of work was a lot of just the utility work. Um, so that work will begin um, kind of in and adjacent to East River Park and we will be issuing the weekly bulletins just as we have with project area two which will have you know, a little bit more line item uh, details um, with, with the construction activities. And then, um, so tomorrow we will be sending out the advisories for the, um, you know, for this information that we're talking about. Again, the closure of the Greenway and then the closure of the park, um, again, in this kind of Southern area. Um, so those will be sent out tomorrow and then we will um, kind of work to get those posted um, you know in the neighborhood um, we do again ask if if um, you need flyers of the advisories of the bulletins for your buildings for your community for you know we have um, Joyce is our community construction liaison um, she is available um, we are all available to um, you know, print out the advisories, um, again, to share with the community, to share within your buildings. Um, we have reached out to several folks if, um, you know, they want us to come and, you know, post the advisory in the building lobby. Um, we haven't heard back. So if, if this is something that, you know, your building would be interested in, we can certainly coordinate um, to have that 
again, delivered and posted, um, please just reach out to us either through the advisory tool, through Joyce's email. Um, you know, there are many different ways for you to contact us, you know, through Paula and Tara, if that's, you know, that, that's what you want, but there are certainly a lot of ways uh, to reach out if you need copies of any of the materials that we have, again, for your communities, buildings, et cetera. Um, we certainly, you know, do our best to distribute everything, but it really is, you know, the network of the CAG and the network of the community boards to really help push that. So we really appreciate that. Um, again, just let us know. Um, so again, this restored area right here, um, that will that will be open again as soon as Parks gives us the okay um, for that trip area to be opened. Right now, the ferry landing um, will have access via Corlears Hook Bridge um, until again, that temporary bridge um, is installed. Um, next year. Uh, Delancey Street Bridge uh, will close and then access will be via Houston, um, 6th and 10th Streets. Um, okay, so for the access and detours, um, so this is, um, again, we have been coordinating with DOT and Parks. So the bike um, detour here in blue is the overall greenway detour um, for the project. So the, the light blue here is the kind of local greenway access that is remaining open. And then the, again, overall greenway detour, if you use the greenway as kind of a commuting or you know, a straight run and you're not you know, accessing local areas, the overall greenway detour will be um, Pike to Allen um, to first or second if you're headed um, south. And then there is kind of local access to 20th Street. And then this continues and connects to 37th Street where the PA2, um, the PA2 detour ends. So this is again the kind of overall bikeway detour. Um, there is kind of localized, you know, there are you can access DOT's, you know, bikeway map for all of the the um, the bikeways in within this area. Um, however, East Houston Street and Avenue C is kind of another kind of major um, alternate local bike route. Um, again, for access, um, the access to the park is um, in East Houston, East Six, and East Tenth, um, as mentioned earlier. So. Again, the greenway will be closed throughout the park. Um, the esplanade will be open in this area here, um, but if you need to access the park, um, those are kind of the, the, you know, the suggested route. Um, the signage that I just mentioned for the greenway that is being put up um, this week is for the, this major route. Um, we are working with DOT um, to provide additional signage um, throughout kind of the neighborhood. We have, you know, that's been kind of something that we've been working on. It's something that the community has asked for. So we are um, coordinating with them on that signage. So the first kind of round of signage will be this major um, detour here. Um, and then other detour um, signage will follow. We are also working with EDC on um, signage specifically related to the ferry terminal. We know that that's been, you know, something that has been brought up at community um, meetings as well. So we are communicating, uh, coordinating with them um, on that. And again, this this is a very big area, so putting up all of the signage will take um, a little bit of time to get it perfect. Um, however, again, this is the first Talk kind of. Now. And then, um, you know, again, we're coordinating with uh, DOT uh, for, no, for no. Ready to arm. detours. Yeah, could I ask everyone please to mute if you can, please? Thank you. Um, okay, so I think, um, you know, there were questions of how 
can you, if once the SUP is, or the Greenway is closed um, at these access points, how will, you know, you be able to access the amenities um, and the contractor will provide safe access across the closed part of the SUP to access um, those areas. Um, there were a couple of questions on um, accessing specific amenities such as the track or the, the baseball courts and the contractor will provide, um, again, access to all open amenities um, throughout the construction um, work that is, that is happening there. Um, so the next couple of slides is an amenity overview. It was requested at the CAG, the CAG meeting and the CB3 meeting quite a while back after we presented the um, construction approach slides for the first time to have a little bit more detail on what amenities would be open. So I'm not going to go through um, all of these in great detail. This is kind of more of a resource um, for everyone to kind of look through. Um, if you have questions, we can certainly, um, you know, respond to them. But this is, you know, this goes through the construction approach slides, which we presented, and then there is the kind of open amenities at the bottom of each um, slide. And again, um, the contractor will provide access to all um, open amenities. Um, there was a question about the Con Ed work that is happening in the northern area, and if that will be um, completed in phases, um, and it, it will be kind of completed in continuous sections. Um, so once one section is done, the adjacent section will be done and it will work um, kind of that way. Um, the flood wall at Pier 42, that is part of um, this ESCR project and it will be, um, it will just connect seamlessly to um, kind of the, the flood wall at the southern end of East River Park and that will be done as part of this construction here. Um, and will be built within the first year um, of the, the ESCR project. Um, so this is summer 22. Again, the list of amenities here. Um, the Esplanade will be open here in summer 22. Um, and then the temporary bridge will be, um, again, this is location TBD. This is not the final location. Um, it will be up in spring of 2022. So we'll, once we have that final location, we will um, present that as well. And then at this point, the Pier 42 deck uh, will be completed there. Um, in summer of 2023, the temporary bridge will be removed and there will be access to the new portion of the park through the Corlius Hook Bridge. Um, and again, this is a list of the amenities that will be open. Um, oh, there was a question. Apologies, I'm just going to go back for a second. Um, in Reach J, the basketball court is here. Um, and there was a question as to if that will remain open or closed. And that will be closed when Reach J is closed um, to facilitate the um, bulkhead work here. And the, again, the foot wall. Um, construction that is a very tight spot in there um, and you're up against the FDR. So that area will be, uh, the basketball area will be closed. That was another question that we had received. Um, and then summer 2024, um, the, the southern portion of the park will be open. And though the, the greenway will still be closed, there will be a continuous connection now um, from Pier 42 along the Esplanade, um, you know, into the park. And then the same with summer 2025. And summer 2026, the um, park is almost completed. The 10th Street access will be available. Um, and they'll just be putting the finishing touches in on the remainder of the park until completion in 2026. Um, so a few of the what we've heard, um, I mentioned that the Con Ed work will be completed in kind of con continuous sections. Um, there were questions about the barging of the materials and if the contractor, if that was still 
um, the contractors um, plan to move forward. Um, so again, yes, the contractor is planning to complete much of the esplanade work from the barges as well as transport, excuse me, bulk materials. Um, there were several questions received about the fireboat house. Um, again, Parks and DDC will follow up with Lessig um, in the coming weeks on the fireboat house. So we don't have um, responses for all for those questions that were asked. Um, there were several questions about barbecue improvements in the neighborhood. Um, so we did reach out to parks and new barbecues were installed at Little Flower Playground, um, Dry Dock and Al Smith. Um, and then parallel conveyance. Um, we were going to have um, DEP join the meeting today um, to speak to parallel conveyance with us. Um, however, since the TRO was just lifted in the beginning of the week, we um, wanted to shift focus to the upcoming work at Project Area 1. So we will have DEP attend um, a future meeting um, next year, and I can't believe we're saying next year and that it's the end of 2021 already. Um, but next year, they will um, attend a meeting to talk more about some of the parallel conveyance questions that we had received. Um, and then again, there was a um, kind of soil and fill settlement question, and we have talked about this um, at previous CAGs, and I certainly can, um, we could speak more to that um, later, um, again, at presentations. However, the, the soil and fill settlement isn't necessarily tied to a specific time. Um, it is, it, the fill needs to settle to meet the specifications and it will be monitored um, to, to meet those um, settlement or compaction specifications. So there isn't a specific time um, associated with that. And that is you know, the most that, that we could say here. Um, and the way the um, construction approaches now the, that we had presented um, a few months ago, that will allow the settlement the majority of the, the settlement to happen kind of in, in one, um, at, at one time, um, instead of breaking it up into separate sections. So I think that was also part of the question. Um, really quickly, interim recreation, um, we had presented this slide, uh, the Pure 42. It's a little difficult to read everything here, and this has a lot of information, so we just um, summarized the actual amenities, since I think that's what people were um, most interested in. But again, um, the EDC website for Pier 42 is here. Um, and this slide is from the March 2020 presentation, which the link is also um, there. And then Parks has their Neighborhood Recreational Resources webpage. So we provided this um, again, and it's on the homepage of the website. So if you just go to um, DDC Eastside Coastal Resiliency, if you can Google that, on the homepage there is a direct link to the Neighborhood Recreational Resources webpage. Um, and then that is it for Project Area 1. And I know there are several hands raised. So Paula, I'm gonna hope you're managing whose hand was raised first. <laughs> I don't, actually, I don't know who raised their hand first, but um, Diana, Robin, um, just go yeah. for it, Robin. Um, hi, Desiree, thanks so much. Can you go back to the beginning again of the map, you know, the overhead map? Yes, of course. Thank you. The, so the that's good. Map or this one? That's, that, that's good, that's good. So if I understand you correctly, everything in brown is to begin, is going to be closed as of December 6th. Is that my correct understanding? Correct. Okay, so I was just, I, 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 I want to, first of all, thank you for this well thought out. You know, every, every time I see this, it's, you know, really thoughtful in in all the in interim recreation. I think these maps are really clear. I think I would love to see giant ones all over the 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 you know near the park. I think this this makes sense. It looks it looks you know clear when you look at this. But I I um I know that the TRO you know held up the process, and I know that there's been COVID has held up this process. But in all fairness, I I'm wondering if who who how we can advocate to postpone this closing one week. And I say one week because December 7th is CB6's parks meeting and December 9th is CB3 parks meeting. So we don't have an opportunity to really let the community know, hey folks, this is it, the park is closing, come down, 
say your last goodbyes. This is your chance to, to, to say goodbye to your park and, and we don't have time. It's, you're asking us to put up flyers and posters, which we can do, but you know, it's Thursday, when are we gonna get these Friday in my community, Hillman and I'll speak for East River, you know, nine, that's at over 2000, 2000 units, it's Shabbat. We have a huge population here that's not even gonna be paying attention to this stuff. And I think in all fairness, you know, one more week, I think for you all will make a difference. It's gonna make a tremendous, huge life-changing difference for the people in these two communities. And so I'm not so sure why you chose December 6th when, we, when there are these two public meetings. What's gonna happen, as you probably know, Desiree, is there's gonna be a lot of angry people at these meetings when they start seeing things closed and they didn't know about it. So I, I think that we should advocate for that as, a, as the CAG group and, and, and advocates to, to say, you know, one more week, we need one week to spread the word, to let people know, to have you guys present this at the board meetings and, and, and say, okay, folks, this is it, December 6th. Thanks, Robin. Um, no, I, I certainly hear you. I know, you know, we have communicated in the past that the park was going to be closing um, in, you know, in November, and it got pushed because of the TRO. So, you know, I can certainly, of course, like, as I always do, I will take back any comments that we receive at the CAG. Um, however, we have been communicating, you know, that this was going to happen. Um, and again, I, I completely understand where you're coming from and I, and I will take that back to the team. Um, but you know, we did let people know that it was um, coming. Sure, sure, Desiree, but you know, this is like, I, I, I think it's been, it's been such back and forth and things haven't happened. And there's a certain strong, as we know, uh, community group of people who have been help, you know, at the forefront, but that's a small portion of the population. And, and, you know, to, to, if we could possibly in the next four or five days before these board meetings, you know, get flyers up in every NYCHA housing complex and in all the private buildings in the neighborhoods and all, I mean, that that's, those are tremendous. And I think that's an effort that needs to be made. And I, I think a lot of people do not know, we've said this, there are so many people that I run into all the time that don't know this is happening. I don't know what else to say about that. Thank you. Thank you. Diane. Hi, um, Deborah. Thank you for looking at the questions about access to the amenities in the North End. Um, and it's great to hear that you know the contractor has a plan. But I think my question there is about timing as well. Um, will those amenities be open on Monday if the Greenway is closed? Um, and you know, I think that you know some of. I'm looking at, you know, what's up there in the North End. I think that, you know, some of it could be accessible, but I'm especially thinking of the lower fields, three, four, and five, and the track, uh, because if the Greenway is closed, people are not going to be able to get into those. And so if we close the Greenway on Monday without alternative entrances and alternative access, then those amenities are effectively closed as well. So um, I just like to know what the contractor's plan is to have those amenities open on Monday and whether they could benefit from, you know, oh, the kind of one week delay that Robin just proposed in order to get all that set up and working so that when the Greenway closes, people can get right to the amenities without any problem. Yeah, and again, Diane, I, you know, we have been um, guaranteed by the contractor that there will be access um, to, to those areas again, accessible access and um, that they will be made available. Um, again, due to you know everything that's happening, I have not seen specifically exactly how that will happen. Um, so I you know I can try and get more information on that. However, we have been guaranteed that the public will have access to all open areas of the park, um, you know, again in a safe, safe manner. Yeah, and just to just to you know sort of clarify that you know with the track, um, the only entrances face the, the the access road, right? So unless the contractor is planning to cut some holes in the fence sometime over the next three days, I, I don't see. I, I you know I think they're very squeezed for time here to make sure that those can be open. So um, if you could find out about that, that would be great because I do think that people you know the 
with global warming, our weather is you know warmer than expected. We still have a lot of people using the esplanade, the fields, the, especially the track. Um, and I think there's gonna be a, a huge outcry of confusion and concern on Monday if those are not open. Sure, of course. Thank you. Trevor. Sorry for no camera, I'm on my phone. Um, I'm, I'm just trying to gain some of this because obviously I've been involved for quite some time and to hear that some people still don't know about this project is just, it's just very, I understand it because not everyone's going to know, but um, when was this, when was the, the initial date where we, when we thought construction was going to begin and this was probably our initial time when we thought even pro COVID, pre COVID. Oh, pre COVID when was construction scheduled to mm -hmm. begin? Yeah. Um, I think that was like two, where, where are we now with pre COVID? Um, that was, I think it, there was about a year. Um, it was about a year ago the construction was supposed to um, begin. All right, and and it would have been this same exact because this map looks somewhat familiar. Obviously, it's a little more detailed and refined, but we would have had a partial closure of the park about a year ago, correct? Correct. And we were preparing for that, and then we were supposed to oh, close the park before the lawsuits. And that was Correct. two months ago. Right, November 22nd. And uh, is the contractor being paid during these uh, delays? Um, that is a good question that I do not have the answer to, but I can get to that sure. answer unless I, from DDC right. has that answer. I, I hear the concern on delays and letting people know. Um, it means that it's a valid issue and i don't know if anyone saw today's news news article but there are a lot of people who are waiting for this project to begin and to get this flood protection in as soon as possible i know the upper portion will have flood protection before we will i don't know if that was the plan initially i thought they were going to kind of run in in tandem but um it, getting word out and getting notices out to people that the park is going to close when it should have closed a year ago I'm just not sure how much effort should be put in the matter if we're talking about a week uh, and and delaying this project even further. Um, that's just my comment and opinion on it. Um, and just from frustration of hearing that people still don't know about the ESCR, it's just amazing to me. But that's just my comment. Thanks, Trevor. Christine, do you have a question? Uh, more like a comment, and it sort of piggybacks on uh, what Diane said, because I think I brought this up the first time this was presented again, uh, trying to wrap my head around how we will have access from Sixth Street and Houston uh, into the park. And I also want to point out that the ball fields that are supposedly open to the community right now, they have, there's one gate that's facing the esplanade that could you know, be opened, it's usually locked. Uh, and all the other entrances to these ball fields is really from the service road that, uh, or the greenway or whatever you want to call it, that is going to be closed come Monday. So uh, it just really seems that the contractor has a lot of things to do magically in one day. You know, it's nice to say the park is closed on September, December 6th. I mean, it's convenient to say, shall we say, but uh, what is really realistic uh, and at the same time, um, providing public access. I think uh, I would really like to uh, have the team think a little bit more about that. Yes, and again, you know, I, I don't want to, um, you know, I think the first week of, um, you know, when the, the park closures are beginning, it, it will be, you know, kind of a, a a rolling, not not rolling, but there will be um, a little bit of flexibility with the access, you know, across the shared use path. Um, and again, it will happen in a safe manner so that folks can access the open areas. But we can certainly come back with additional details for you. Doug, do you have a question? 
Uh, yeah, at first I want to just say that um, I'm the only one who speaks for East River. Um, I don't need anyone else to speak on behalf of East River Housing. Uh, number two, I have to uh, ditto what Trevor said before. I, I think that he's correct. You know, I, I agree with his sentiments. And if we're able to get those flyers out sooner than later, we could get those flyers up, you know, perhaps even tomorrow morning and letting people know, you know, the update and the change. And I think that would be really great. Thank you. Yes. As soon as we have them tomorrow, we can deliver them to whomever would like a stack of flyers. <laughs> Looks like uh, Robin, do you have another question or is that, oh yeah, you took your hand down. Or, okay. I, yeah, also I, I wanted to, I did. I wanted to piggyback on what Trevor said. I wasn't quite sure Trevor, what you, were, you were talking about planning, but I, I think that's the key. and. You know, we were planning, we, we had time to plan in November to let people know about this. And, and we had time before the, uh, the the TRO to plan, you know, but this closing date's been such so fluctuating. I, I still think, you know, it would be great to give more time so we could plan more than in 24 hours, you know, <laughs> to put flyers up uh, to really make sure people understand that this is closing and uh, again, I'm I'm wondering how the state was chosen since that again since knowing that the two communities that are most affected by the closures six and three have their meetings two days three days after the closing date. Also, I'm sorry, just going to go back on the um, uh, the the flyers. Um, I, it looks like East River Housing would want one. Robin, it seemed like you also I, I saw a yes. At the same time, Desiree was mentioning it in the chat. I'm not sure if that was an indication that you two also wanted to see some at your development. Um, I think just again, in the interest of time, um, if any of you have um, in your residences would like to see flyers, I think it's if we have the opportunity to, to get that to um, Desiree now or this you know this evening, so they can be prepared to have be to distribute them in the morning. I think that would be best. So if you all can put it in the chat. If you want us to, if you want to send us an email, but um, just to be mindful of that. Yeah, if there's, it would be helpful to have, you know, and again, you might not want to put your name and phone number in the chat, but if you want to email um, Paula or Tara, if you don't mind, Paula and Tara, just kind of, you know, bringing together a list, um, it would be helpful to have a number so that way we can call you when we're delivering it or just let us know a contact or where to drop them off or just something so that way tomorrow we could certainly um you know have them um distributed you know and and that we know where to bring them physically um or who to give them to again Desiree, could i ask you a question how how is the um access road going to be um shut off is there going to be a fence around it or do you know how that's going to work it's my understanding that there will be a fence yes and then we'll cut below uh playground or uh, ball field three it'll be a fence all, all the way across the yes there right. also there's a fence there right now at the end of the, the field you know, just to be continuation of that fence i would imagine is that Right, I, where there are existing fences, I, I believe, um, you know, they will kind of stay, but the ac access to everything will be closed. So kind of at the Esplanade, the access will be closed. Um, and then again, I, I don't know the complete details on the, the SUP for this area, but I will work to um, get some more details on that um, as soon as I can. Um, if I could find out anything tomorrow, I'll certainly send that over. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Are there any other questions? And if there are, again, any other questions, we are available, you know, again, through the inquiry tool or through Paula and Tara. Um, as well, just if. And we will be presenting at CB3 next week. Um, we were told that the CB6 um, land use and waterfront meeting was canceled 
uh, for this month as it happens later in the um, later in the month around the Christmas holiday. Um, so again, we presented tonight. We'll, we will be at CB3 next week if there are additional questions. Um, and then we will not be at CB6 uh, this month. And then in January, we will pick up with all of the meetings. Trevor, sorry, Paula, Trevor has his hand up. Just for real quick one, for the CB3 meeting, can you, uh, since that'll be three days into this process, can you bring uh, us what you've seen in terms of the closure and any issues and where those cross points are for that particular meeting? Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions before we let DDC go. Okay. Well, thank you, Desiree. Thank you. And Paula and Tara, if you do, yeah, I can't see the chat. I'm sure uh, Leah can, but if you do, if there are a list, if there's anything you want to send um, as far as flyers and distributing, that would be great. Thank you. We will send that to you. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Uh, Desiree, Frank. can I get one more question out of you? I'm sorry, it's yeah. Frank. Uh, no, I just wondered uh, when will we see the um, results of the artist submissions? I'm kind of excited to see what the neighborhood put together. Oh, sure, yeah. Um, sorry, Lydia, do you know Kevin? Okay, we're um, hopefully by the end of the month, if not, um, into early next year. So um, we're working on um, kind of how, again, during these times of COVID, we can kind of celebrate those who were uh, selected. Um, so we're kind of working on that um, as well as the, the selections right now um, with, the, with the selection committee. Um, so it is, it was really like the amount of artwork that we received, it was just so, so wonderful. Um, it's, you know, really hard to have to limit it, but um, it was really great and we're, we're excited. Um, and again, we are hoping to do another call for art. So if there were those who missed this call for art, um, we are looking to do another call for art later in the project um, as well. So uh, yeah. Thank you. Hope, yeah. Okay, so thank you um, all so much for joining us tonight. Um, we will post this to the website um, tomorrow. We'll try and get it up sooner um, than, you know, kind of the, the end of the day, we'll try and get it up in the, in the beginning of the day. Um, and then as, as soon as the um, advisories are finalized, those will be posted as well, um, as well as a bulletin for the upcoming work. Um, and uh, again, we'll be happy to distribute them uh, tomorrow as well. Thank you. Great. Thanks. Have a good night. Good night. All right. Thank you all who the city agency folks who are here. You are free to go and we'll move into the, the CAG only portion. We're just going to take a like just some one or two minute break for everyone and we'll resume at 5.05. See you then.
All right. Um, just in the interim, um, just want to do a very quick roll call um, before we go ahead and start. So I'm just going to read everyone's name. And if I don't call your name and you're here, um, you can shout it out or put it in the chat. But um, I'm, I've been taking roll while we've been in the meeting. So um, I see Martin's here, Dove's here, Charles is here, Frank is here, Diane is here, Nancy is here, Richard is here, Sam is here, Robin is here, Trevor is here, Susan is here, Seth is here, Chris is here, Io is here, Christine Brooklyn, Brooklyn excuse me, is here, Christine Dats Romero is here, um, I believe Tony is on the phone, Tony Rivera and Natasha. Doris Huff is here also, we're sharing the same screen. Oh, okay, great. Hello, Doris, it's great to see you or hear from you. Hi, here. how are you? All right. Michael so is here too. Screen. I'm sorry? Oh, Michael, I see you. Okay, I see you now. Thank you. And Sandra McKee from CB6. Okay. Oh, hello, Sandra. You are our newer member. Um, I think yeah. Paul, we'll get to the intro. <laughs> you were a surprise. I'm kidding. Um, but Sandra, it's great to have you on board. Thank you. Hi, this is Mike Schweinsberg, president of the 8BCD Block Association, and also wearing my uh, 504 Dems hat. That's the nation's first and largest advocating for the civil rights of people with disabilities. So I'm looking at this meeting on behalf of my neighborhood and my disability community to ensure accessibility is uh, fully built into everything. All right. Okay, well, let's kick off this CAG only conversation. Um, we wanted to, we have a few agenda items, but we, before we get to them, we wanted to open up some space just to um, react to what you just heard or, or, you know, follow up on the conversation about the, the notion of asking the city to postpone the, the, uh, the closures by a week um, or just react to anything else that, that you heard this evening. So just opening up the floor for, um, for that. Um, I mean, at least as it relates to um, information regarding the the noticing, it looks like Sam requested flyers for his building. Is has any is, does anyone else want flyers for their buildings? I think that could help. I mean, we're talking about lack of communication or lack of people knowing what's happening. If I think it might even if they're only you know able to. You know, having some flyers up, I think if they're willing to go ahead and do that, I think everyone should take advantage, um, especially since it's all you have to do is say yes. <laughs> Does anyone else, else have any interest? Yeah, uh, Michael Marino from Friends of Corollary's Rift Park will take some to put on our bulletin board. Okay. So I think what would, I think would be helpful for, for anyone who's interested, if you can email me and Tara, because you, we all, we all, you also need to uh, supply a you know, phone and contact. Yeah. number so the actual flyers can really be successfully handed over to someone. So I would propose that people email um, me and or Tara um, if they're interested and with their with their contact phone number. Yeah. And just to confirm the flyers have already been sent to the community boards for their mm -hmm. um, newsletters. Great. Is that right? Um, oh, as far as I know, no. I thought that what would be happening is, um, you know, they typically do those construction bullet bulletins. Um, I, I maybe I may have misunderstood. I thought that with the with tomorrow's construction bulletin, given the TRO was just lifted, that would be the first notification that people would receive, which is why there's concern about it. This being such short notice, which we understand, but at the same time, yes, we know that this is also something that's been planned, even though it hadn't had a you know a target date ha hadn't been realized until now. Um, so as my understanding is really that people, there are people, even though they were aware the park is closing, they didn't, aren't aware that it's going to be this Monday due to the TRO being lifted. Right. So can we discuss that at all? I mean, I brought it up, you know, and, and I'm concerned about it. And it, at least 
I would think it's how I would do things if I were them. I would I would tell my supervisor, hey supervisor, why don't we wait a week because we have two board meetings in the community and we can talk to the community and then let's go to the park. At least we can show good faith. But they're not doing that because they don't care. So, do we have any way to? I mean, yeah, I can put flyers up. I need like twenty flyers because I've got nine buildings and multiple places to put flyers. But like I said, it's it's it's. It's not really, I think, I think if they're talking about community relations, community relations is something that I think we as an advisory board should really push and community relations would be that they present that the park is closing to the community at the two community board meetings with a date in the future. So people can go, oh, wow, okay. And then it's done. And everyone has a chance to attend the community board meeting. They should at least put signs up in the park. I mean, that's the least thing they could do is put signs up immediately that the park's going to close on Monday. Yeah, There's I no signage anywhere. I was in the park this morning. There's no nothing to indicate it's going to close. And that's five days from now, four days from now. Yeah. So that's the least they could possibly do. You would think the parks department or the contractor would be doing that. Yeah, but you have a public forum that's called a community board meeting that the community is invited to. And that's where they get their information from. And we have two of them this week in the community boards that are that, that are the communities for this park. So again, I'm gonna push for that. Like yes, yeah, Sunday, Trevor, well, whole week, will it make a difference? I think, I think there's perception and I think that perception is important. And yeah, I think it'll make a difference because we're talking about what they might getting flyers tomorrow, Friday and putting them up at some time. And I mean, there's Saturday and then the park's closed the next day. It doesn't even give people a chance to even go to the park. If it's closing, it's really one day. It's not even Sunday. It's not like they're closing it on Monday. They're closing it Sunday, the 6th, which happens to be the last day of Hanukkah, by the way. Well, so the 6th right. is Monday, but um, Trevor? Okay, thanks. Thanks for telling me, Karen. Never mind. Never mind. It's okay, you got two days, one day to go to the park if you, if you see a flyer. Okay. Yeah, um, yeah, it's just, uh, I, I'm, I'm just leery, especially for those folks who have been waiting for the flood protection to essentially ask for another restraining order for construction um, to begin. I think that's- I, Well, I'm not asking for, it's not a restraining order, it's a, it's a community request, hey all. You know, could you maybe just do it? Wait a wait a week. Why is that a restraining order? Like they. That's just my. It's just my opinion because that's essentially what would happen. Uh, since they couldn't start construction, if you ask them to wait a week, uh, it, and uh, that's my opinion of that. I I don't agree with that. I understand notifying people and it's going to close quickly and Monday's the day. And I, I think at minimum they should put signs up in the park. I think they could do that. That's that's a small manpower ask from a large construction company and H and to be zero, but to ask for a, a delay in construction, that's essentially a restraining order from them uh, moving forward on construction. Um, I don't know. I, I think it's an arbitrary date. They just, the machine orders lifted, they chose a date. It's arbitrary. Actually, actually, from a construction standpoint, it isn't. Number one, the city is paying those contractors and they have been paying them over that PRO because they have to, um, which is actually our tax dollars that we're paying more that is the quickest date they could get to mobilize the equipment to that point. If they could start quickly, they probably would have with the notion that we already knew the park was closing. Understanding that they didn't give us much notice and they give the public notice, at minimum, I think they should put up signs. Um, and for those who want flyers, give them out flyers. But us asking to hold construction on a $1.5 billion project once again is essentially a restraining order. And I think we need to be very careful about about asking for construction delays. I do think that they can, first we keep saying the park is gonna be closed and the entire park is not gonna be closed. Portions of the park will be closed. So I'm like, we have to go out there and say goodbye to the entire park. Um, I'm just giving you my opinion and, and, and it's not a matter of challenging someone's you know, thought on this. That's just how I, I think that we should proceed. What happens hypothetically on Tuesday at CB6 and on Thursday at CB9. CB6, I don't think, I don't think they're having their meeting. Yeah. I think they said they're canceled. Gonna... Desiree said that the meeting is canceled. Oh, okay, it was, I saw it on the website. Okay, what happens when people come to our community board meeting, the ones who are really affected by the closing part of the park, which is the Southern end, 
and they're like, what the heck? I, I think park we, on Sunday and the meetings today. Why didn't you know what's going to happen? What, what do we what do we do as a community representatives of the community to to appease that situation? Well, I think that's our responsibility. As a community board or as a CAG? No, as a CAG, CAG too. Yeah. I mean, we're I'm, speaking 27... a, I'm speaking as a CAG member that my opinion is that I don't I wouldn't advise us to ask for delay for another delay and we've for us to be responsible for another delay. With regards to the community board, that's the community board. I, you've been to a number of those meetings and instead of four and a half hours, it'll be a five hour meeting. Um, so it, it's, it's nothing that we that the board hasn't seen or dealt with. Um, but from the CAG standpoint, I think it's, it's be very careful about asking or to stop construction for a week. Um, Chris, has had, Chris has had his hand raised for a while. Chris Collins. Yeah. Hi, um, I just want to give you a little bit of background in terms of our experience in terms of what we've had at Stico Park. Um, and um, again, not uh, to the previous uh, speaker's point, not to argue with anyone, but just to sort of give you our experience. Um, we found that um, from a communications point of view, the people on the ground, the contractors, have very different motivations and very different styles of communicating from the people at DDC. Um, they often are completely in contradictory paths. Um, and you'll get one set of information from the contractors who have a motivation to get this thing done so they can get their bonus so they can finish fast um, within a certain time period. Um, and the people at DDC have very, very different um, impression of things. Um, the second thing is I, I caution you when they use the word you're going to have access to something. Um, access to them means something very different from what it means to you and me. Um, for us, access meant getting access to our building during construction. Um, to them, access meant having a path to get to the building that took us out to Avenue C and all the way up to 23rd Street and then back down to our building, only to find that the building had no heat, electricity, or anything in it. So, and, and we weren't allowed to have access into it until 3.30 in the afternoon. So, so when you when you when they start using the word access, you'll have access to this, you'll have access to that. You need to drill down on that. What they mean by that. Um, the other piece I was going to mention is that um, they're not going to. There's no incentive for them to delay. Contractors are getting paid on a certain schedule, and they have uh, compensation if they achieve their schedule ahead of time or on time, and they have penalties if they're late. So there's not going to be any um, interest in trying to delay it. You can ask for it, but they're going to push back really hard on it and probably want to keep moving and get, get going on it. Um, and I guess the last piece is we had negotiated a deal where the northern portion of Stico Park was going to be available when the black, well, the park was going to be available when they were working on the black cop with the solar one building. Yes. Yeah on the northern portion was going to be worked on and the southern portion was going to be available while the northern portion was being worked on. But lo and behold, when they started working on the northern portion of the park, they realized that the gate at 20th Street was something that they had to construct now. And so they're encroaching in the southern portion of the park to be able to do that gate. The merits of that, I'm not going to argue that, but it's definitely in conflict with what was supposed to have happened leaving one section of the park entirely open, and that's not gonna be the case. They're gonna take over a small part of the, of the southern portion of the park while they're doing the northern portion because they need to, to be able to keep on their schedule and get the wall built. So just be, you know, when, you, when you're looking at all these things, our experience is that schedules change. It happens, it's a huge construction project, but I would really argue for paying attention to the details Picking your battles, picking the right battles, and and pushing where you need to push, um, and let some of the little things, the smaller things, go, um, and 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 really try and escalate those as best you can. That's been our experience. Thank you. That, and I will say, the people on the ground are nice. They're doing their job. They're as accommodating as they can be. Um, but when you get beyond the people on the ground, you're working with DDC. Um, things just change. Thank you, Chris. Um, Christine. 
Yeah, thanks, Chris. And uh, the words of the sage. Um, fortunately, Chris is retiring end of December and uh, <laughs> might not have to deal with uh, the nitty gritty of this. Yeah. Uh, what I, but what Chrissy, I had... let me let me just interject. I actually have to leave early because my retirement party is tonight, so I'm going to take off. But <laughs> All right. I will. I'm going to try and stay involved. Okay, great. All the best. We will miss you. Thank you. Talk to you later. Thank you. Congratulations. Um, no, what uh, what I would like to just express from my perspective is that, um, yes, the park was supposed to be closed on November 21st. Um, I feel um, when they presented the phasing plan, we never really had a chance to ask our questions and get them really answered. Uh, they had, uh, DDC had these questions for some time now. And uh, again, tonight, and I think uh, this access um, issue is really the biggest one. Um, Desiree had no concrete answers to the question of how is access going to be provided. And I find that just really disappointing. Uh, they had arguably two weeks or three weeks or even a month to really figure this out because this is something that was brought up and they still don't have answer. They just have this wishy-washy, oh, our contractor is ensuring us there will be access. And I just don't think that's good enough. Um, and I am very disappointed about how this process was, you know, how neither at the community board or at the CAG, we had a chance to really drill down and ask our questions and get meaningful answers. Uh, what we saw today uh, with the presentation, a lot of time was eaten away by stuff that is really not what's on people's mind. What we should have really discussed is the nitty gritty of this park closing and addressing the questions of phasing. And that just, you know, was, I don't know whether it was purposefully, but, you know, just towards the end, 15 minutes. And I just want to speak up about that and express how frustrating that is from my perspective. And, you know, I, yeah, it's just, just not good. Diane. Uh, yeah, I mean, I would echo some of what uh, Christina just said. Um, to me, um, I, I understand the trepidation about asking for a full stop on the progress of construction. Um, but I also think that it would be perfectly possible for both, um, you know, the HMTV Lira team and the contractors to work together with the community to help us understand exactly how this is going to unfold over the next week. Um, you know, I still, I still don't feel that they understand what I'm saying um, about access to some of the amenities because, <clears throat> you know, um, it's not their park. It's not the place where you know, their community goes um, for safe recreation. So they're not as familiar with it as I am. And they're, they're not seeing the concern that I'm raising or Christina's raising or someone else is raising. Um, we've ta I've talked to them a number of times about how popular the Esplanade is and how many people of all ages from all areas of residence around the effect, you know, our community uh, use the Esplanade for, you know, for walking, for running, for biking. Um, could it, would it be possible? to leave the Esplanade open, you know, and have that be the very last thing that closes or something like that. And I, I'm disappointed that we're not having more of a conversation with them about how we might sort of execute this over the next week or two in ways that would, uh, you know, not slow down the progress of construction, would, you know, still mean that, you know, they're getting as much done as they can in one day, but they're doing it in a way that, you know, kind of, um, makes the most sense for the community, gives the community access to the most valuable parts of the closing part for as long as possible, and also buys a little time just to get the word out, um, you know, and, and give it one last shot. Um, I know it's crazy, but it is absolutely true that there are people that just don't know that this is going to happen. Um, and so I, 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 I'm sorry that, you know, we're getting these kind of vague blanket answers um, instead of it being a real partnership where we can say, hey, you know, um, how, how, how could this unfold, you know, say between now and Christmas in ways that doesn't delay the project, but that makes sense for the community um, to sort of get their heads around. This is, this is real. It's really happening this time.
Trevor. Sorry, just trying to unmute myself. And, and I understand. And just just a note, the we for the last two months we had uh, carved out time to talk about exactly what Diane is talking about. So for this upcoming parks meeting, it is the only thing on the agenda. Uh, and I, uh, we had sent out a request for questions uh, because we initially thought we were going to talk about this in November, but obviously we're going to talk about December. But those particular details, uh, I'm hoping that we'll be able to discuss. Uh, at our uh, at the community board meeting um, at, with at a certain amount of time because our the focus is only on construction and phasing. Uh, just to note. Robin. Yeah, and and Diane, you reminded me. I guess in the as you're talking about phasing construction, which I guess will be in the community three board meeting on Thursday. But the, they switched, right? I think Chris brought that up. Chris reminded me that the that the southern end was going to be open. They flopped. They flipped it right because of the Con Ed project, right? If my if I remember correctly. So the fact that the southern end is closing before the northern end um, is something that's new information that I think happened after the initial November closing. So again, I guess it would behoove us to make sure that that information is clearly outlined to the community. So um, Trevor, I'm just curious in terms of the, like, have you been, did you receive questions um, from the overall community that are going to be addressed at next Thursday's meeting? Not as many as I'd hoped, but I'm taking notes from this meeting. Um, I tend to get a lot of information and good points from folks here because they're obviously more involved, but we didn't get that many. Um, but we, we will have a lot of time and uh, to, to study the, that phasing and ask a lot of questions. Uh, typically, there's you know, other things on the agenda, but for this meeting, this is the only thing on the agenda. And, it, and I'm going to ask them not even to give us an a update on the CB6 portion. Um, I mean, it's useful, but we really want to talk about construction and phasing, and and that will probably take at least a couple hours. Okay, understood. All right. I mean, so just thinking through like all of the, I mean, there are. I'm just wondering what everyone's thoughts are as far as um, expressing to DDC what the overall concerns are. I mean, it looks like there'll probably be more of a discussion next week. They probably will come with a little bit more information again since the TRO just got lifted yesterday. So um, just in consideration of you know next steps with this, I think it might, I just want everyone's like folks thoughts. If we wanna start like generating a list of ideas, I'm sorry, ideas, list of concerns that we have around the phasing and the construction moving forward, separate from the actual start date um, that we can start compiling in, in the event that we want to, um, I guess, move forward with a letter or, or additional meeting or something. Um, Nancy? Okay, having problems on muting. Um, just two things. So Trevor, um, is there any possibility that the Parks Department um, meeting regarding this agenda be brought more to the south so that more people who actually live by the waterfront can attend because you know uh, it's you a virtual know, meeting uh, it's a virtual meeting oh it's virtual yeah okay so can you send me the link so that i can share it sure and it's on the community board three website okay okay and then secondly you know i, I don't mean to beat the drum but you know there has been so many delays on this project that I really feel that we really should consider not really imposing more delays on this. I mean, and, and, it's, and to say that the community doesn't know, this has been a two year battle. Everybody knows about the park. Um, so, you know, to continuously look for reasons to delay this project, I think it's a mute point, like we've delayed and delayed, whether it's because of the air, whether it's because of this, whether it's because of that, whether it's alienation, you know, when is it gonna stop with the delays? We really need to get this moving forward because the ones that are really being impacted are the ones that live across the street. I'm just saying.
Hi. Um, sorry, I can't raise my hand right now. I broke my hand. This is Wendy. And I just found out I have to have surgery. But I just want to say one thing that back in March of 2018, CB3 voted down the previous plan. So that was the, to me, the beginning of some of the delays right there. And I think we need to recognize that. And I also wanna say that park users are just as affected as people who live nearby. And I know that might sound crazy, but I'm in the park every single day, even though I live five blocks away. So I'm just gonna leave it at that. I'm sorry I missed most of the meeting. I can respond to that, but I think everybody knows what my answer is. Right. Um, so I, I mean, I think accessibility to the park, what they're saying is accessibility to the park asset, asset, assets is a huge deal. I mean, if we cannot actually get to the park, um, then that's going to really affect a lot of people. So we have to really make sure that the contractor understands that it's really important to let people in and not to have the delays that Chris had spoken about. If that's the issue, we're going to have a lot of problems in the neighborhood with people being very, very upset that they can't get to the running track or, or the water just to look at it. I mean, that's really going to be um, where the rubber hits the road right there because that's going to be public relations you know, in person every day with people. So that's only my, my thought about it. Thank you. And I agree. And I've asked him to bring specifics on accessibility in advance. Uh, that's why I'm trying to get as much information in advance as possible. Yeah, this is Diane. I would just say that, you know, the whole rationale for keeping part of the park open was that people who live in this area um, need to, you know, continue to stay healthy and have safe, uh, safe places for recreation while this project is going on um, so that we make it to the end where everybody's safe and there's a brand new park and um, this is all, you know, behind us. Um, and so that's my concern as well that, you know, I, I want the access to be, you know, safe and effective and the amenities to be open and usable. Um, because I, I think we should have both things. I, I think we should have the flood protection and I think we should have every opportunity to you know, stay healthy during the five years uh, that this is ongoing because um, it's a long time and you know, there are gonna be kids who need the space and older people who need the space. And you know, I just wanna see the city do a good job of keeping open the parts that they, they say are gonna be open. Hey, I'm sorry. I don't know if uh, it's my turn yet. Uh, is there anyone else whose hand is raised? No, I was just about oh. to call on you, Frank. Oh, okay. Thanks. I have to get going after this. I apologize. I have another meeting. Uh, but I, uh, it's sad to know that Chris uh, is retiring because I actually feel very um, strongly that he's been very articulate. And I think he just gave us a real kind of lesson, uh, one that I am going to take, uh, which is, you know, Understanding, uh, oftentimes, I, I think it could be missed when you're thinking from a community activist perspective, which is um, incredibly valid, but understanding the practicality of what's at play. And I really think he was just saying, you know, pick your battles. Uh, when it, I'm, I'm, this is my comment in regards to delaying it for one week, uh, because there is no incentive for these construction companies. And he's laying out from his experience that there's a disconnect from what DDC may want or tell us or their intentions and what the construction companies have. And I think we have to kind of focus on the reality and the practicality of this. And so, uh, you know, people can argue back in every which way. I think there's enough people you can throw up to say people did know about this project, people didn't know about this project, but I'm looking, I'm trying to take a lesson from what Chris just advocated before. I don't think he made a position on that other than to say that you really have to kind of choose wisely what you're going to go for. Uh, and so I hope that people understand that a lot of times it's not just what we want, we want, we have to work within a system that we can get things that we actually want and things that make sense. So anyway, take that as you will. Uh, I have to go and I really apologize, but 
I hope everyone had a good holiday and uh, happy holidays to people who are celebrating now and uh, happy new year, et cetera. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Frank. Hi, Frank. Martin, do you want to say something? Yeah, the, the people who use the park know that it's closing. They've been using it. They've been seeing what's going on. They understand that. Uh, as far as the contractor getting paid, they get paid a percentage of based on the work that they've done. If they don't do anything, they don't get paid. But they, they're, they're getting a, a, a percentage of that of of the um, work submission that that goes it in, goes in for payment. The um, uh, there's one other point. Well, the uh, you know it, it, as far as uh, extending the time, whenever an outside force stops them from working, their clock stops, and so they're still. Uh, on target of earning the um, additional funding for ending early, even though it's later than the original time that the early date was scheduled. Because if we stop them from working, it's on us, not them. That's it. Robin? I, I'm just hoping, I, I would like to ask that we don't general, make generalizations because um, I, I think we get into trouble that way. And, you know, I, when, I, when I mentioned that there are people who don't know about the park closing, I'm, I'm talking about individual people that I, every time I'm in the park, I ask everyone I run into if they know the park is closing. And I would say 95% 95, 95 of people don't. And the other 5% think, oh yeah, I heard something about that. So I, I, I would like us to, 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 to probably not speak in generalizations that everyone knows about it. And I, I think what would be helpful, what I, what I feel like is missing is that, you know, the, the information and, and we're all, we're, all we're, we're, we're guessing and making things up, you know, about how, how the city works and how the construction company works and what negotiations they have and what their contracts are. And, you know, I, I Desiree is not the person that it, it seems to me that can give us that information. You know, if she, if she could, maybe we need to hear from someone else that could tell us, well, if we postpone another week, it means X, Y, and Z, or the city can't do it because X, Y, and Z, or the contractor can't do it. You know, I, we don't know that. We don't have that information. We're just guessing and making up things. So, um, you know, and, but we are, but, and, and also, you know, yes, we all want flood protection. And, you know, do we all agree though that this plan is going to give us that? I don't think we all do. And that's something that goes back, you know, as Wendy said, to 2018. But I, I would like us to, you know, I, I would like to, I, I'm, I'm, I, other projects that have, that we've been involved in have had people like who really know the details and can translate that detail to us. And I'm not sure if there's another person at the DVC that's more of the a community relations or PR person that really has every single answer to our questions or more than we're getting from Desiree, who's been great. But that would be helpful to know. Okay, we can't delay for these reasons, these finite reasons. A, this contract with the city. B, the contract with whatever it might be. It would be helpful to have that information. We can reach out and ask. Um, I mean, they were in the room, but um, and I, you know, I would imagine that they probably, you know, they would be. They are taking it back to discuss. But again, can't make the assumption, so we can we can make the ask, Trevor. They will also be in the room at the CB3 meeting as they always are. The full yeah. team is there and we don't even, a lot of them never get a chance to answer questions. Uh, DOT comes to every meeting and they're rarely asked. So the full team will be there. Hi, this is Tony Rivera. I don't know if anyone can can actually hear me. I'm doing this over the uh, yeah, the, we can hear the you. mobile. We can hear oh, you, Tony. Great, great. And first of all, I want to apologize for not attending uh, meetings in quite some time, but there was a little bit of a mix up. Um, the last one I was invited to, but there were a few in between. Um, I've learned, I, I think this one I, I learned uh, quite a bit in terms of 
the fact that you know certain ball fields will be available to us and 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 as many of you might recall i'm the president of of the les ols little league and we were a big user of the fields down there and yeah access to the ball fields the ones that that will not be closed for at least 2023 and uh, 22 to 23 is critical for us so we 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 would like to make sure that that you know the pathway to get to those fields is 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 indeed part of the game plan and it's and it's relatively easy to get in so that that would be the one point that i would drill down should be answered completely and fully to our satisfaction before before they actually start you know closing things up and i'm not sure if if the timeline would allow for that it sounds like maybe maybe we do get that opportunity through the the community board meeting uh but it would be nice if 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 we do have that that opportunity to make to get that clarification this is not one this is not the point that we want uh miscommunication between the construction and the contractor and and what we've been told by by the developers and and uh what we've been told in these meetings so that, that would be my one point as far as delaying it for any other reason I don't. I don't necessarily see uh, a, a major reason to delay it uh, from my perspective. All right, Trevor, do you have another comment, or is your hand still raised from the last time? I'll, I'll put it down. Sorry. That's okay. It's okay. All right. Um, I mean, we have about twenty minutes left. I mean, it does look like a lot of. Um, some of the a lot of we're going to get more answers um, next Thursday. Um, if there are some, we will reach out to DDC to see if they can give us a little bit more of a concrete um, rationale around around the, the Monday closing. Um, but again, um, it looks like I've already received some emails from folks who are requesting flyers. Um, my thing is always like you know prepare for the worst. Um, right now, if they're moving forward with the sixth, the best thing we could do right now is really trying to get the information out um, to folks. Um, and hopefully be pleasantly surprised if they're able to um, delay. So the meeting is Thursday, next Thursday, which I believe is the 9th. We'll email the CAG um, with the information. As Trevor mentioned, the, the meeting is, is virtual. So folks can don't have to travel anywhere. So we'll get that information to all of you. Um, I think we did want to, there's some, just a, one other thing we wanted to talk about, Paula, um, only because I, we have some folks, We've lost a few folks, so I'm not sure if we have what we wanted, which was our quorum, which we did have. Um, so we, what we wanted to do is talk about the bylaws. Um, I, when we met last month, of course, we, we had a, a reduced um, attendance as well as the issue around the, the TRO. Um, we, the members in, in pre, who were attending the last meeting, they did indicate that they wanted a basically a vote before the vote, um, making sure that everyone is fine with the bylaws as they stand now, as uh, that meaning they are ready to be voted upon. Um, I, again, not sure, I think we might've lost our quorum though. So this might have to go back to email. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure we've lost quorum. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, let me just please now that we're going to have to turn this vote over to, to email, I just really want to strongly encourage you to vote um, so that we can, again, to vote for me to, to release a draft or hopefully the, the almost final draft of the bylaws to you guys to then subsequently vote on again. Um, so I'm going to be on a nudge campaign after I send out this vote to really try to move this process along. So I'll expect personal nudges if, if um, you don't vote. Okay. Um, uh, I think the other thing we wanted to talk about too is, um, we, you know, we did, we know that there are concerns around potential moving date, moving the meeting date time, um, just to see if we can accommodate others. We know that that, that may not potentially um, work. Um, but we did want to put it out there to see if there were other dates and times of the week that may be more ideal for us to have the CAG meeting and get your thoughts on that. And we can hold a, we would all, again, I'll similarly do something um, ver via email to determine what our um, our next meeting dates will be for 2021, 2022, pardon. Paula, could I ask you one question? Will the uh, do you have the flyer in a digital form that you could send us? 
that we can post online? As far as I know, that bulletin hasn't been sent out. They usually send out construction bulletins on Fridays. So if you're not already on their list, Charles, I can um, send you a link for you to sign up. Um, but they generally do send them. I mean, it, it depends on the time on, I, on I, don't, I can't tell you an exact time that they'll send it. So I do know they have their concerns around um, certain folks not seeing it, um, seeing their email after a certain time due to um, the Sabbath. So we, you know, I think getting the printed copies earlier in the day might be helpful. Um, but if you aren't already receiving those bulletins, Charles, I can send you the link. Uh, I'm, I don't think I am, but I would love a digital copy somehow so I could. Yeah, that they'll send you a digital copy. So I'll send you the email link after, I'm sorry, the, the, the website link after the meeting, and then you can just sign up and you will be, you should automatically receive the bulletin sometime tomorrow. I can't tell you the exact time. Okay, great. Thank you. And that could be also something that you all do, of course, you know, share with your, your um, networks, but in the interim, if you want to get physical flyers up, um, please email me. But going back to um, just per, like other proposed dates and times for the for this meeting, um, are there other days of the week and other times that would be better suited for folks that we could maybe put out to the larger CAG for a vote for moving forward in 2022? This is Michael. I, I know that um, I'm, I'm the minority here, and I think I'm the one that has brought this up a couple of times because um, this time rarely works for me. I, I uh, and I know that it's it's next to impossible to find a time after working hours because of everybody's community board meetings and other obligations. But um, I am I've been back to in person work since August of 2020. Um, so it's either leave work early or stay at work late to be in the full two hours of this meeting. Um, and so I rarely can do either. So I wind up only being on the first hour of the meeting and missing the CAG part. Um, the only reason I'm on the second hour today is because I'm working out of the Long Island office instead. And I decided to avoid the traffic and stay late and join the meeting for that period of time. And, and I got somebody to take care of my dog. So, um, you know, again, if I'm the only person who's having trouble meeting this meeting time, then you don't need to change it obviously just for me. But if there are other people feeling the same uh, challenge of doing a four to six meeting time, then potentially it would be nice to look at other options. Thank you, Michael. Um, I, mean, I think that there are some folks, I mean, who haven't quite been as consistent. And I do think that it could potentially be um, due to time. And, and some folks did have to drop off today for some meetings, which I imagine are just one-offs. But, you know, Thursday between four and six is, is, a, is a bit of a struggle for some, um, depending on the, on the month, then maybe we can consider another day of the week. Um, I know uh, we did have that Tuesday meeting. Um, I mean, that wasn't much, much better, but if there is another day of the week or time that anyone, I mean, Michael, you tend to, it seems like maybe daytime in general is no good for you. Not, it's not even a specific day of the week. It's just generally, it, it would have to be an evening meeting. I mean, that would be for me to be consistently there. Yes. If, if, it, was, if it was fully daytime, it would probably be a little bit easier, but again, it just depends on what's going on at work. Like today I emailed you that I was going to miss the first half of the meeting because yeah. I pulled into a meeting with my boss. Like I can't not mm -hmm. go to a meeting with my boss, you know? So, mm -hmm. um, so yeah, e either way would probably be better rather than a time when, when at least a lot of people are getting off of work and we have to commute home because we have something at home to get home to. Okay. This is as good a time or as bad a time as any. Okay. You know, I too, I, I'm, I'm still at work, of course. Uh, and that's how I get on. Uh, at night, mo almost everybody who's participating here goes to community board meetings. Yes. And, uh, you know, one way or another, there'll be individuals who can't make it because, uh, you know, you, it's on a night that's a, a meeting that they have to be at. Understood. All right. Well, CB6 has uh, eight, eight uh, committees, nine committees now, and as well as the full board and executive committee. I mean, pick a night. There's something happening. I'm sure CB3 is the same. 
Right. So later may not be more ideal, but there's not like a specific day of the week that that might be more ideal for everyone, at least from everyone here. So um, noted. Um, send out a doodle. Yeah. <laughs> send out a, yeah. I was trying to hopefully send out a doodle with fewer options for people to choose from. So we wouldn't, you know, but um, we'll, we'll work on that. Um, it's obviously because we have, you know, our next meeting um, is next year. Um, so if um, Paula, are there other items on the agenda that we no, no, nothing else. All right. So, I mean, we will. Uh, I'm happy to give folks their ten minutes. Um, if there's Wait, any other... Wendy has a question in the chat um, oh. that I don't know the answer to. Um, no. Well, this the CB3 stuff. We'll send it to. We'll send. Don't uh, anything regarding the CB3 stuff. We'll send all that. We'll send you all the CAG that information. So, no worries on that. We'll send it to you after the meeting. Um, and then Charles and I believe now Robin also made the request for the link to sign up for the bulletin. So I will send those to you. Um, Michael, I'm sorry, Mike Schweigenberg, um, I sent you a, a, a direct message chat, if you could please respond, or if you can email me, my email is in the chat. I'm gonna put my email in the chat right now. Um, and I think, and anyone else who, if you do have any request to um, receive flyers to be distributed in your mm -hmm. respective areas, I've received an email from Michael um, from Dove, and I'm sorry, I might have received more. I'm still looking through them all. Um, but if you haven't yet sent me an email, if you could please send me one um, by 7 p.m. just so I can get that email to um, Desiree, so we, she can get working on it. Um, and if you, if I, if, if you, and no one receives, I would say by three o'clock tomorrow, if you haven't received any indication that you will be receiving flyers, please reach out to us. Let us know so we can follow up with Desiree to find out what the status is. Um, and I think that might be all. Unless there's anything else, anything else anyone wants to say? Thank you. Happy holidays. All right. Yes. Thank happy you. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Good, morning, all, and a happy New Year. Night, all. Bye. Bye. Bye, everybody. Good night, everyone. Have a good evening. All right. Mm -hmm. You too, Nancy. Thank you.